Are we about to get a new astrophotography camera from Canon? Will it be called the Canon EOS R10A? Canon's first astrophotography camera for the R system. Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news and rumors. Canon Watch says this rumor comes from a known source and they believe it makes sense with the 60D having reached end of life and is no longer available for sale on Canon's website. The Canon 60D was released back in 2012 and can only be found in the used market. Canon hasn't released another Astro camera since, but it looks like Canon might be gearing up for a new Astro camera in 2023, and it looks like it's going to be based on the Canon EOS R10. So what are the specifications for the Canon EOS R10A? Well, that's simple. It's going to be based off the Canon EOS R10 right here. So it's going to have a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor. It's going to be capable of 23 frames per second electronic and 15 frames per second mechanical. Granted, the buffer is rather slow at clearing out, so you might only get a second at that rapid speed. And in terms of video, up to 4K 60 with a crop or 4K 30 or 4K 24, 25 and 30 at 6K oversampled 4K. It's going to have that same multi-purpose hot shoe found in the Canon EOS R3 and the 5C dual pixel autofocus Mark II. And of course, it's going to have a flip screen that has a resolution of 1.04 million dots and a 2.3 million dot EVF. But of course, this being an astrophotography camera, it will have a modified infrared filter and a low noise sensor with heightened hydrogen alpha sensitivity for improved capture of red hydrogen emission nebula. And of course, as the 6CD, it will still function as a regular camera, a regular APS-C camera. So if you're shooting stills, if you're shooting video, well, nothing else is really gonna change, but I can guarantee you there's gonna be a bit of a price bump over this camera. The Canon EOS R10, I was gonna say the Canon 6CD, the Canon EOS R10 sells for $979. So I suspect that Canon R10 Alpha or Astro camera is gonna sell for a little bit more, but it's really exciting to see that we're finally getting an Astro camera back. I personally don't really care about that capability. I do shoot the moon, I do shoot the planets, but I live in an area where there's an awful lot of noise pollution. I live in the greater Toronto area. And while it's perfectly good for shooting Jupiter, for Saturn or the moon, when it comes to shooting stars or anything else in the night sky, well, it just doesn't work out. So for me, to spend that extra to get that capability, not so much. But if I was living a little bit further north, Wow, I could imagine the shots I'd be able to get just a couple of hours north of here and light pollution is a thing, well, you just don't see. On nights without the moon, it's absolutely dark. You cannot see in front of you. It's just absolutely astonishing. And now let's go a little bit behind the scenes. The footage that you're looking at right now was captured with my Canon EOS R5 with the RF 50 millimeter F1.2. And it was Friday, it was 10 o'clock at night. It was actually 10 after 10. And I was enjoying the fireworks in my local town as a celebration of Canada Day. So what settings did I use here? I'm shooting 8K over sample 4K, 8-bit. I'm not shooting Canon Log 3, not Canon Log 1. I'm not using a cinema gamut, just 8-bit. And when you're doing fireworks, that's all you need. Now, as far as nailing the focus, this is very important. What you want to do is you want to nail the focus before it gets too dark. And what I did is I focused on a building that was some, well, three to 500 meters away. I nailed the focus and at that point I left the camera alone. I didn't turn it off. Although the camera did go to sleep, it did shut off the LCD. But as soon as I woke it back up because I hadn't turned it off, the autofocus wasn't reset. So when the fireworks started up, I captured everything in great detail. And on my 4K television, things absolutely look terrific. And the video you're looking at here, I haven't adjusted the color at all. This is straight out of the camera shooting 8-bit. The aperture, fast and wide open at f1.2. The ISO, 800. Now a couple of things I want to talk to you about the shutter and the ISO here that really go hand in hand. The footage looks pretty good, but you'll notice at certain points you'll see a bit of flashing. And that's because the shutter speed isn't, well, fast enough. You see, normally you want to use the rule of 180. So I'm shooting at 30 frames per second. I want to set the shutter to 1 60th of a second. If I'm shooting at 120 frames per second, that shutter again should be 1 240th of a second. And for most video, that's ideal. That's perfect. But if you're shooting things like fireworks here, I should have set my shutter to something like 360. So my shutter should have been one over 360. And with that being the case, most likely my ISO would have been somewhere between 1600 and 3200. So it's really important to pay attention. Now, if you don't mind the flashing a little bit here, then if you use my settings and you got Canon EOS R5 or another full frame camera, you're gonna capture fireworks and they're gonna look absolutely terrific. 
The biggest thing is you want to turn autofocus off. Do not go with autofocus. It's going to pulsate from time to time. Most of the times it's going to look pretty good. But when you come up to that finale, the last thing you want is the autofocus system hunting because fireworks is all about the audio and the audio, the audio. I just said audio, didn't I? Fireworks is all about the visual and the visual matters an awful lot. But talking about audio, that might have been a Freudian slip there. You'll notice that I have audio here. Listen to that. You can hear the fireworks going off and they're in sync. So what I did in post is that I separated the audio from the video and I adjusted it because I was probably several hundred meters away from where the fireworks were going off. So I just realigned them until everything looked right. So I had the audio and the video and everything was perfect. So you definitely want to shoot with manual focus. That's very, very key. And you want you want to do if you're shooting with something like 50 millimeters or less, then if you're shooting at something, aiming at something that's about 300 meters away or 600 feet away, it's pretty well acting as infinity for everything thereafter. So when you tilt the camera up to where the fireworks are going to be, they're going to be in focus. But if you take a look at this website here, they tell you based on the camera, based on the lens, based on your settings, how far away the object needs to be to pull focus on before you start shooting up in the sky. Now, if you're doing astrophotography and you're shooting with a lens like a 20 millimeter, then you can probably shoot at or aim your focus at a shed or something that's no more than 20 to 30 feet away. So when you tilt up at the sky, everything's going to be in focus. That's one of the easiest ways to pull manual focus. The other way, of course, is locking onto a bright star, zooming in, adjusting the focus manually. That's certainly another way of doing it as well. I, I really wanted to get this out to you. I wanted to do a video on fireworks alone before at least Independence Day. So for those of you in the United States, you could have used this information. But you know what? I was relaxing my t I was enjoying my time off. I was relaxing. And you know what? I just completely lost track of time and I haven't put a video out for several days and really there wasn't much of any news. I really enjoyed my time off. But if you do want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors or see the latest review that I put out, go ahead and subscribe. But please make sure you choose all notifications because as soon as I publish a video, you're going to get notified by YouTube so you can stay up to date on the latest news and information. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.